يقول إمام النووي رحمه الله تعالى حديثا بفوق وعن أبي عبد الله جابر بن عبد الله الأنصاري رضي الله عنهما قال كنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في غزات narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said, we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ghazatin, meaning uh, on a battle. فَقَالَ إِنَّ بِالْمَدِينَةِ لَرِجَالًا مَا سِرْتُمْ مَسِيرًا وَلَا قَطَعْتُمْ وَادِيًا إِلَّا كَانُوا مَعَكُمْ حَبَسَهُمُ الْمَرَضِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that in Medina, so they were on a battle, they were in jihad. He said, in Medina there are some men. Who remained behind. Masirtum Masiran. You do not travel any distance. Nor do you pass by any valley. Except that those men in Medina are with you. With you meaning in terms of reward. Habasahumul Marad. Why? Because they were kept behind due to sickness. Meaning that these men had the intention of going out with you. But because they fell ill, they were unable to. So they are with you in terms of the reward. وَفِي رواية إِلَّا شَرَكُوكُمْ فِي الْأَجْرِ رواه مسلم. In another narration it says, except that they are with you, يعني they, they are sharing in the reward with you. This is in Sahih Muslim. And a hadith in Bukhari, narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه, he said that we were ret- returning from the battle of Tabuk, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to us inna aqwaman khalafna bil madina that we left behind some people in madina ma salakna shi'ban wala wadiyan we do not pass by any ravine or any valley illa wa hum ma'ana except that those men we left behind they are with us habasahum al-'udhr what left kept them behind was a valid excuse so they are with us in terms of the reward. This hadith is an evidence and a proof for the person that whoever has a good intention, whoever has a valid, pure intention to do a righteous deed. However, something comes up that prevents him from this righteous deed. He has an excuse. He became ill. Uh, he fell asleep. Any valid reason, something happened and this prevented him from that righteous deed. The hadith proves that he will have his reward just like the one who fulfilled that deed. He will have the reward just like the one who actually went out and fulfilled that deed. In another situation, similar to this what the hadith mentions here, are, or there are people who are used to doing certain deeds. It's from the adah, it's from the custom, that they are accustomed to doing certain deeds. But, when something happens, and they have a valid excuse, and they are unable to do those deeds, then once again they will have the reward of doing those deeds in full. Mm-hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا مَرَضَ abd When the slave becomes ill, or he travels. These are valid reasons now. For you missing these that you're used to doing. For example, if you used to fast. Or you used to pray the night prayers. Now you are ill. Or you are traveling and you are unable to do so. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, It will be written for him what he used to do when he was at home and he was healthy. If this was your ada, then the reward will be written in full. If, the, if a valid excuse arises. So as we said, if somebody is accustomed to fasting Monday, Thursday, for two or three weeks he becomes ill, doesn't fast. He will have the reward of those fasts every Monday and Thursday. If somebody is accustomed to praying the night prayers, he becomes ill and is unable to, or he genuinely oversleeps, he will have the reward of that entire night's prayer. If somebody is accustomed to coming to the masjid, Salatul Fajr, and he genuinely oversleeps, he will have the reward as if he prayed in jama'ah with the rest of the, with the people. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
he will have his reward. This is for the person who has an, an ada. Ibn Uthaymi rahimahullah then says that as for the person who has no ada, he's not accustomed to doing deeds. Right? It's not he's accustomed to fast. He doesn't usually fast. But he forms a niyyah to fast. He never fasts Monday, Thursday. Sunday night comes, he says, Inshallah, I'm going to fast tomorrow. When he wakes up, he oversleeps. And he doesn't end up fasting. The Sheikh says, يُكْتَبْ لَهُ أَجْرُ النِّيَّةِ فَقَطْ He will have the intention, the reward of his intention. But he will not have the reward of fasting. Because it's not from his, his, his custom, his ada. Understand? So this is when there's no ada. The first hadith, however, proved that when a person has an intention and he's going to do this intention and he goes out, but he's prevented. He's prevented from it. He will have the reward in full, inshallah ta'ala. So this again just shows us the power of having a valid intention and also having an ada, having worship that you are accustomed to doing. Any worship is daily Quran and you could not do it for a reason, you, you get the reward as if you recited the Quran. Right? This is the importance of having daily acts of worship that we continuously are doing. As for those of us who don't have this, then when we don't read Quran, there's no reward. If we don't usually come to the masjid and you have a valid excuse for not coming, you will not get the reward of coming. Because it's not your ada to come to the masjid. And this is how the issue is handled. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahuma wa bihamdik. Shadu an la ilaha illa ata astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.